Welcome to episode 63 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this episode, I interviewed Holly Mallows from Boston in the U.S. about how she got into sourcing. So it was actually a funny story. Um, I had moved, I left Massachusetts and uh, moved to Orlando just to get, get out of Dodge, right? It's like small town. And I needed to get a job. I tried working at a bank, but that was like the most boring thing, you know, ever. So I got a, I got a waitressing job at Olive Garden. And it's like probably like three days in, I almost burned a baby with hot soup. I was like the world's shittiest waitress. So I couldn't remember anything. I was like, this is terrible. I quit. I, you know, whole big blaze of glory, right? Walked out. Uh, I went into a staffing agency and I was like, you know what? I was like, I need something behind a desk so I can like answer a phone, right? Totally fine. I'm 18 years old. So I walk into the staffing agency in Orlando, like a temp agency, and the branch manager's running around crazy. And she's like, you, can you answer a phone? I was like, yeah. Can you start right now? So <laughs> that was my first job in the staffing industry. Um, I, I stayed in on my lunch break, stayed an hour after, not getting paid, taught myself Word and Excel. Um, I said, you know, teach me what you're doing. We had um, major clients like uh, Lockheed Martin and Sprint. We were a minority vendor and I became a recruiter. And within about a year and a half, I was, I had two people under me and, uh, you know, stayed in the agency world for about five years. And after 9-11, everything tanked just about everywhere. So uh, I took a job in corporate recruiting for a startup uh, in Celebration, Florida, that's actually now owned by Google. So it was a small e-commerce company. I was the first person in, in TA that was ever hired. And I started at 23 years old, started their recruiting function from the ground up. Oh, wow. So it was, uh, it was actually really exciting. It was great. Um, I moved back home to Massachusetts, stayed in corporate recruiting. Uh, 2010, I was working for a dialysis company, DeVita. And they came to the recruiters and said, look, we're doing away with Monster, Career Builder, no more job boards. And of course, you know, everyone's like, oh, what do you do? Nurses, nurses aren't on, on LinkedIn, like, oh my God, right? Everything was on fire. So they took, uh, I think there's about 80 different recruiters across the country and they picked five of us to go through AIRS training. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where I met Shannon Pritchett. So uh, she was one of my AIRS instructors and I, I went through, I had the whole year, did like all the training classes, got all my certifications, uh, I thought sourcing was probably the coolest thing I had ever seen in my life, right? You know, I was like, this is like magic. This is, I love this. This is fantastic. And to me, it seemed way cooler than, you know, doing the full cycle and, you know, staying up at night worrying if this person's going to accept an offer and, you know, dealing with issues with, you know, with the rest of the team and on, on the HR side of things. Uh, so I pitched my case and I said, look, you know, this is something that I love doing. You know, I've trained the other recruiters. How, how do we make this a job at DeVita? Um, they didn't have the internal structure to, you know, there weren't sources, right? That wasn't really a thing yet, like widely known. It was like, what, 2010? So it was just getting started and, and uh, they were like, all right, so you'll carry your full rec load, but now you'll be a program manager, right? And you can do all the sourcing stuff. Sounds great in theory, but when it came down to, you know, your bonus time, they're like, well, you haven't filled as many recs and we really don't know how to measure sourcing. So that's not, that's not going to work. I was so discouraged. And I'm like, you know, there's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a better way. People are doing this full time as a job. Um, you know, I, you know, SourceCon was going on and I decided I was at a point in my life that, you know, a position, at least financially, that I could leave my job and try to go independent, right? I had enough of a little bit of a buffer in there. So I did, I resigned. I quit my full-time job and decided that's it. I'm gonna pursue sourcing 100%. This is what I'm gonna do. I was scared to death, <laughs> scared to death. Um, I, I decided, I'm like, well, I don't really have that experience if you look at my resume, but we can church it up a bit, right? Kind of highlight those, those portions of it. And what I did is I went to my LinkedIn network and I started reaching out to like small, Oh, there's the back name again. Sorry. <laughs> um, I started reaching out to like independently owned uh, uh, placement firms. I figured, you know, a lot of these are like old school recruiters. They need sourcing. They don't know how to do it, right? Because they've just been picking up a Rolodex or a phone book or a book of lists. And, you know, that's, that's really how they were doing things. So I started marketing myself proactively to these folks. I got a few contracts here and there. Um, I was able to kind of put that to my resume, feature it on my LinkedIn profile and kind of build up. It was really a lot of marketing of myself. So I really had to take that, kind of brand it. Um, 
funded my first trip to SourceCon myself. And I actually had a, a chance, it was uh, Chris Murdoch that I had, a, I got into a conversation with him and uh, he's like, look, I have to leave, but if there's anyone in the room that I could introduce you to, who would that be? And I looked over, I'm like, oh my God, Shally. Like I need to, you know, the man, the myth, the legend, right? And he's like, oh, I know Shally, great, come on over. I kid you not, that was the most intense five minutes of my life. I was literally sweating like down, down my back as he's like, you know, kind of asking me all these questions. Well, what makes you a sorcerer? And, you know, kind of poke, poking at you as Shally does, right? And uh, I was like, I don't even know how that went. Like, you know, was that a good conversation? Was it not? You know, we separated ways. And then towards the end, he looked over and he was like, hey, we're going out for drinks. You want to come too? This was like, I basically, I got to have drinks with Oprah, right? In my mind. This was like the biggest thing ever. Uh, so through Shally and through others at SourceCon, I got a chance to meet other people, get better networked. And then from there, I was able to take uh, contracts on my own, working for bigger companies. Uh, so for seven years, I was independent. Actually got to the point, I had five full-time clients at once, which was a lot to juggle. So I, I hired a few folks that I knew. Um, I actually knew personally. I had uh, uh, my, actually, what is she technically, like a cousin-in-law. She was a stay-at-home mom. She really wanted to work from home. You know, she, she's like, I'm smart, I can learn this. Uh, my sister-in-law, so I ended up started like training my own band of minions to like <laughs> to do consulting with me. And none of them had experience. I just took the knowledge that I had, you know, shared that with them, helped them to network and grow. And it was kind of like paying it forward, right? I had a lot of people in the industry that, that helped me and, you know, Shally was my mentor and, and got me into speaking. Which really worked out because when you're independent, no one's going to pay for your, your trips to, <laughs> to the conferences. Um, you know, so, so that kind of gave me a, a shoe in there. And uh, yeah, so after seven, seven years of being independent, I missed being in-house, having a team and being a part of something. So uh, I took a global sourcing lead with Raytheon and was there for about three years. Uh, got offered an amazing job as a director of research and sourcing at, at Jewel Labs, the vape company. That went up literally in, in not, it, no, not, in, not in smoke, not in smoke paper, but in, right? in vape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that was an interesting experience, but actually really great experience. Um, and then in February, I joined uh, Marsha McLennan. So now I'm the head of TA for the U.S. for uh, the Marsh business. And here I am. You had a lot of kind of influences and, and obviously, yeah, having, having trained with people like Shelly and Shannon, you, yeah, you, you get the best of all the world. Um, for somebody like now leading a team, where, where do you kind of send your people to learn? Yep. So, so depending on budget and resources, right? So there's a ton of free stuff out there. Um, so even starting folks off as I was training them and, you know, I was on my own budget, um, there's stuff on YouTube, right? So Jim Stroud does, does a bunch and he's got things posted out there. Um, but the learning that I developed, uh, you know, as I kind of like honed in and got better at it and really learned kind of the art of sourcing uh, was through the Sourcing Institute. So I consulted with Shally. That was um, quite a few of my contracts actually were with him and under Hire Force. Um, so at Jewel, we brought the Sourcing Institute in and, you know, for full year, all the training modules and it wasn't just the the technical you know sourcing techniques but it's also the soft skills too like well the other piece where you're managing the client the business working with recruiters um so i feel like that was really helpful um so i have to say if you have paid resources that's you know that would be the recommendation but you know if if that's not an option for you i would say try to network as much as you can within, within the industry and you know i mean people are very open and willing to share and, and want to help out and and just you know, even for a few minutes at a time, like Dean DaCosta, I don't even know how he does it when he's working full time. Anytime I ping him, he's like, sure, let's hop on a call. But he, he does that for anyone who's, who's curious and wants to learn more. So it's really cool. I, lo I love the sourcing community. Everyone's great. Yeah. And uh, obviously having like done various different industries from yeah, starting in staffing, doing, yeah, as you said, nurses, uh, I'm guessing working for Raytheon is not exactly nurses, uh, things like that. Like what's been, how do you kind of switch to another industry? Where do you start? And what, what has been the kind of hardest thing for you to, to get into in terms of like how to find people for that specific industry? Mm, so I think if you're a good sourcer, 
you can source for anything, right? It's so it's just like recruiting. If you can if you can recruit, you can recruit for anything. It's it's taking the time to to learn more about that, not just what's on the job description, right? Like really understand. Uh, so that was interesting because I was doing nurse recruiting uh, at Concentra. Oh no, I started out in tech recruiting. Excuse me, I started out in tech recruiting for them, and you know I had someone literally poke the head over my cubicle and say, "Hey, can you recruit nurses?" I was like. Sure, why not? I had no clue. I remember putting someone on hold and yelling back over the cubicle, what's an NP? Because I had no idea, right? <laughs> so I had to do, you know, had to, had to shift gears and nurses don't have an online presence. So, you know, had to think creatively and outside the box. That's the piece I think that really makes a difference. Um, and when I'm interviewing, looking for sourcers, not necessarily have you done this specific industry? Have you done nurses? Have you done chemical engineers? It's tell me your process. You know, if I, if I dig into someone and I'm, and I'm talking to them, I'm like, okay, well, tell me how you would do X, Y, Z or find this. And I'm like, okay, well, what if that doesn't work? What do you do next? If, if they come to a stop before I can keep pushing, then I know there's no end of the, of the internet, right? To me, it's like, there's, you're never just like, nope, that, you know, that, that doesn't exist or no, I can't find that. Um, so I think it's that creative outside the box and that curiosity with the research piece of it, that, that makes the difference. So you know, coming back to that, yes, yeah, sh shifting gears sometimes was challenging, but I actually like that. Um, I worked for Merck in the animal health division. I was literally recruiting and sourcing things that I didn't personally agree with, right? The person that, you know, the veterinarian that injects, you know, the farm animals to see how much, you know, see how much uh, vaccine kills them or antibiotics versus what doesn't and what's the right amount. But it was an interesting search, right? finding people that were on the pork board and kind of going down that rabbit hole. Um, so I think, you know, from a transition and what's been more challenging, I think adjusting to different roles from a leadership capacity and, you know, different organizational structures, that's been more of a challenge versus uh, the skill sets of what I'm actually searching for. Kind of in the same vein, I mean, like, obviously, you've worked both in, you've worked all over the different states, um, being based in Mass, having been to Florida or worked in Florida. Yep. Is there any kind of big difference from your kind of point of view of, of recruiting people in Massachusetts and any like in other states, um, especially for idiots like me who you know are geographically challenged on the other side of the pond? What would we have to think about if all of a sudden we get a role in Massachusetts rather than Bay Area? So, I mean, I've been working remotely for 15 years now and, you know, even like Jewel, Jewel is West Coast there in San Francisco, uh, recruiting a lot of people there. There's, of course, a disparity in pay, just geographically, right? So there's that factor. Um, Raytheon, they had some locations that were in places that were really it's super cheap for them to build a location. But does anyone really want to move from, you know, the beach to, you know, something that's 120 degrees in, you know, Arizona or, you know, some podunk town in like Michigan? Tough sell, right? <laughs> so I think trying to get people to go to those locations is a little bit more challenging than, uh, you know, maybe where you're searching for them. I think, you know, people are people. So I don't think that's a factor. Um, I just think you need to understand it, cultural differences, right? And so just what people are used to. So in like the Bay Area, there's a lot of tech startups, right? They're used to, you know, they're free avocados in the morning for breakfast, right? And it's like, and their toiletries in the bathroom. And I got spoiled with that at Jewel. I'm like, go in, I'm like, oh my God, this is fantastic. Um, so I think things like that are important to know, right? Just understanding like in that area where they are. Um, but I think that's also the type of company, right? Tech startups are a lot different than, you know, big stodgy old defense contractors. Um, yeah, the geography, not so much. If you, if you have to go within different countries, Definitely, that's different. Like I did a training um, in Toronto, Canada one time and I did this really great 90 minute presentation to find out that, you know, the bulk of what I presented on was something that they can't do in Canada. And I was like, that would have been helpful to know. <laughs> so I think those kind of nuances amongst countries are greater than, um, you know, than some of the stuff we, we face with, you know, the tech culture industry or pay disparities. So. You, you touched a little bit about it when, when you're saying, like, when you're looking for people for your team, but, you know, as a manager kind of leading a sourcing team, what is the thing that you would be looking for when you, you know, when you're looking for people for your own team? So, you know, I don't care ge geographic wise. Um, you have your phone, you have an internet connection. I feel like sourcing can be done from anywhere, right? And so, and I'll, and I'll 
that's one of my hills to die on, right? I will fight you tooth and nail. <laughs> that you say you got to be there 100 percent of the time. I get FaceTime, but you can do that with travel or, or Zoom. And this is a perfect example, right? We're all in quarantine. Guess what? Business moves on. Um, so as far as what I look for in people, um, not so much the background and the experience, right? It's if I see someone who's a recruiter that wants to be a sourcer, first question I ask them is it because you want to work from home. <laughs> or is it because you actually love sourcing? Like, tell me your story. Um, and then looking at, I guess, I guess the why behind it is the first, is the first piece for me because I want to know what motivates them. Uh, I've seen so much passion and just enthusiasm in our industry. And I feel like a good sourcer and someone who's really going to, you know, really going to do well with it, not take advantage of it, um, is going to have that, that fire to want to learn um, natural curiosity, um, like I said, the outside the box creativity, I think that piece is important. Um, you can teach someone Boolean strings. You can teach someone how to, you know, how to, how to search and how to source. It's not rocket science. Um, hiring managers think that, you know, think it's magic. And I think that's great. Um, but yeah, you can't teach a person to care, right? And to really like, have that passion, they have to have that. So. If uh, people want to follow you, Holly, and uh, yeah, see where your uh, story takes you, how can they best do that? Um, I'd say probably, I mean, I'm active in some of the, the, the Facebook groups like SourceCon, um, but primarily on LinkedIn. I've been badly neglecting my Twitter, so you can follow me there. But <laughs> um, And then actually, Twitter and LinkedIn are the same. It's, it's Holly Source Guru. Perfect. Thank you very much. I look forward to uh, yeah, seeing you soon again. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.